This is the Vivo X100 Pro, Vivo's latest and greatest flagship. Now, what's the big deal? Is it the new MediaTek 9300 chip inside of it, the giant battery, or maybe the new in-house imaging coprocessor that makes it worth buying? Well, after using mine for a day, it is none of the above. I believe that the Vivo X100 Pro has the best lens ever produced for a smartphone. Today we're going to be delving into the Vivo X100 Pro purely from a photography standpoint and finding what makes it so special. We're not going to be looking at any other features of the phone, it is just going to be purely photography focused. Now first off some basic tech specs, the phone has three rear lens slash sensor combos, cameras if you want to call them that. It's got an ultra wide 15mm f2 with a small 1 over 2.76 inch sensor. Uh, it's got one main 23mm uh, lens with a f1.8 aperture in front of a big 1 inch sensor and then one 100mm f2.5 periscope lens on a half inch sensor, although the imaging size for the 100mm is closer to 1 over 2.5 inches. And this is the new lens and the exciting lens. Both the main and the 100mm telephoto lens come with optical image stabilization, but that is not available on the ultra wide lens. All you get there is digital stab. Now, I'm not going to talk about the selfie camera because if you want to buy a phone for photography, you're not gonna be taking photos with the selfie camera. Okay, let's jump into some photos. First off, taking a look at all three of the different lenses on the Vivo X100 Pro. This one is the ultra wide, the 15 mil. And what we can see as we zoom in here is uh, 15 mil, it's not too great in the corners. There is a little bit of kind of blurring in the corners, even a little bit of color fringing uh, up at the top left corner and the top and the bottom left corner of this image. There is a little, few little halos as well around uh, some contrasting objects here. That's a little bit of over sharpening. Overall, look, does it look super bad? No, does it look great? I wouldn't say that the 15 mil is the X100 Pro strong point. But we move on to the main camera, the 23 mil f1.8 camera, and things start to look great. This is a very challenging scene. There's so much detail in it, so many colors, so many, you know, really high, really hot highlights with the sky and really deep shadows. You know, these trees in the back are, are really just bang in shadow. And you can see there's a tiny touch of, of noise there in the background, but overall the 23 mil here is performing a lot better optically. Um, you know, a little bit of noise, but overall it's been sharpened very, very nicely. Next up is the 100 mil, and this is looking great. Only thing to note with the 100 mil is that because it is a 100 mil f2.5, you're actually going to find that it has a very thin plane of focus, a uh, thin depth of field. So what that's going to mean is that you know while this central uh, kind of branch of flowers was in focus, anything behind or in front of it is not in focus. So that may lead to scenes like this where you've got a lot of depth, uh, some things looking less sharp in, than others because they're just not in focus. Uh, but overall, look really clean image. Next up though, we are going to be taking a look at the 100 mils macro mode. So because it uses a floating element design, the periscope lens, the telephoto, uh, that means that it can get really close to subjects like this. And the great thing is when you're getting close to subjects like this, this is all natural bokeh. And look, I'm shooting through glass here. So this isn't perhaps the sharpest, uh, but you can see where I actually did get the subject in focus. Uh, it's really nice and sharp, but I love the fact that you can do macro and it is straight out of camera like this is a very small ring by the way so uh, I also got a macro photo of some broccoli because I thought that'd be fun um, and look you can see that the 100 mil even when it's nice and close because of that floating element design which basically means a few more elements move to make sure that it stays in focus when it's nice and close to things it looks really good and here, I mean, look at these colors coming out of the 100 mil. I should note that uh, all of these shots were taken in the Zeiss natural mode, which is the phone's uh, kind of most realistic color profile. And I think realistic is a great way to describe the colors that come out of the Vivo X100 Pro when you're in, uh, yeah, when you're in either JPEG mode or RAW mode. All of these RAWs that I've shot as well, uh, I shot them in RAW, which also spits out a JPEG. But I mean, just look at the colors here. 
Great example of the 100mm on the Vivo. It is not fringing at all. You can see a little bit of busyness in the bokeh here in the background, but look, the foreground's nice and sharp and uh, great colors. It's dealing with the sky really well, just like in this shot. And that's gonna become the common theme in this review. The 100mm lens, it displays no fringing. It displays you know, no distortion, no longitudinal chromatic aberration, none of those kind of bad optical characteristics and it is still really really sharp and again I just love that you can get nice out of focus backgrounds like this with the Vivo 100mm lens and it's all natural it's all in camera and there is zero fake AI image you know magicry going on. This though, back on the 25mm uh, main camera here, nice little shot of some cheeses. And the thing I love about this shot is that it just looks so true to life. You know, cheese, it has a really interesting shade of that kind of creamy beige, but uh, the X100 Pro manages to capture this perfectly. Got a little bit of bokeh in the background as well. It's not an easy shot to capture, uh, but it just dealt really well with the whole thing. Another little macro shot here as well. Again, I love the fact that you can basically obliterate the background naturally on a smartphone. This is all straight out of camera. There's no, you know, fake background blur going on here. And I just love that. And look at this. This is a super, super sharp image uh, for something taken, you know, on a smartphone. I mean, it's a super sharp image overall. Uh, there are lots of full frame camera lenses that would struggle to take an image that sharp, that close. And here's an example again, just outside of some text. We've got uh, really nice and sharp text. This is shot at uh, ISO 50, which is the base ISO of all the cameras of the Vivo X100 Pro. And uh, yeah, it's just dealt with it beautifully. Speaking of base ISO, so this is an image shot uh, using the Pro mode, using raw, using the raw files of the Vivo X100 Pro just to test out the dynamic range a little bit. Um, and so this area, as you can see, the JPEG was completely black. This is a train tunnel. Um, this is what happens when we bump up the shadows a little bit. Now look, this is obviously like a real uh, worst case scenario, but what you can actually see is that even when you bump up the shadows of a just unusable area in an image, um, you actually can still get some really good detail on some of the things in there like these power lines these power transforms whatever they are you know they still retain a lot of detail for something that was you know almost in pitch black before um, so that's a really good sign for dynamic range uh, actually moving on to this next image here uh, we're testing out the rolling shutter there's not much rolling shutter whatsoever with the 100 mil and again another little dynamic range test so i shot this image uh, two ways. I shot it straight out of camera JPEG, which has the watermark here. And then I shot it raw and tried to edit it like the JPEG. So what you'll find is the raw here that's been edited, it does have a little bit more noise. You can see some noise in this area here and some of those sort of dark areas down the bottom, uh, even though I have denoised this with an AI denoiser in ON1. Um, but the great thing about this image is that it does have a very nice amount of detail in the outside highlights area compared to the straight out of camera JPEG where it's denoised the image very, very well. There's not a single speck of noise in it, but that comes at the cost of losing some of that resolution in that outdoor area where there's really strong highlights. So it's kind of pick your poison, uh, take your trade off um, with the pro uh, mode as well you know you can change the EV the exposure value quite easily so that's what I did here as well by bumping it down a couple of stops next up just a few more photos of flowers I mean I won't go through these for too long but uh, just straight out of camera the this, this looks amazing in my opinion. I mean, this is a 100 mil lens shooting these flowers, shooting this tree. Uh, it looks like the most realistic, most natural green that you've ever seen come out of a smartphone. If my Nikon Z6 produced this photo, I would be stoked. I mean, I'm already thinking of, you know, maybe cropping this, obviously getting rid of the watermark and, uh, you know, printing it out big because I love, love, love the colors of these frangipanis in this photo. Again, it's so easy to shoot flowers with the Vivo and make them look good.
Next up, we've got a portrait here. So I shot this with a one quarter strength black promist filter on uh, from Seven Artisans. And I did that just to, you know, see how a portrait looks with a little bit of that uh, softening effect added, a little bit of extra bloom, which almost makes it look um, uh, look kind of less smart, but less digital, I would say, slightly more like film. And I love the result here. Next up, this is just, again, straight out of camera, really easy portrait uh, of my dad, and he's looking good there, ISO 89. You can see that kind of square bokeh that the uh, 100 mm lens on the Vivo does produce. I mean, it's not really square, it's kind of half square, half circle. It's not sure what shape it actually wants to be. Um, so that's, honestly, if I had one single criticism about the 100 mm lens, it would maybe be that. But even that, I, I love the bokeh here. It still looks really good, still nice and smooth. And here's just a nice shot uh, that's a bit artistic. I edited this one, black and white, great levels of contrast here. Uh, the background looks great. Again, it's just shows you what you can do. And one more shot for fun uh, while we're just looking at some standard photos here. This was shot in the portrait mode of the Vivo X100 Pro. Uh, so what this lets you do is uh, just, you know, put some fake bokeh in the background. And I will admit it's done pretty well. Uh, it's picked out my grandfather's hair pretty well. Uh, and look, the bokeh, it does look very Carl Zeiss. So another little bonus of Vivo and Carl Zeiss's partnership there. Okay, next up, let's take a look at the distortion characteristics of the three different lenses on the Vivo X100 Pro. Uh, first up, a great example of the worst culprit here for distortion. Of course, it is the ultra wide lens, the 15 millimeter lens. Now in the settings, you can turn off ultra wide distortion correction, which I have done for most of these shots. This is the lens with distortion correction off lots of uh, barrel distortion. And then here, this is with the ultra wide distortion correction turned on. As you can see, uh, it does smooth those lines out and it does make them nice and straight. Uh, moving on here, we actually have uh, another example. This is also of the 15 mil ultra wide lens. Again, no distortion correction on. You can see the corners of this image, super warped. Turn the distortion correction on, you get a little bit of a crop, uh, but it is corrected. But moving on to the main lens. So this is the 23 mil uh, with the one inch sensor. You can see this is really well corrected for distortion. Uh, it actually has one glass element and uh, uh, the rest plastic elements. But I was interested to hear that Vivo added one glass element to it. I'm not sure, maybe that was to correct distortion. But overall, it's got no distortion whatsoever, looking really good. Moving on to the 100mm and the 100mm also has really no visible distortion whatsoever. It is a really clean, crisp lens. Now let's take a look at longitudinal chromatic aberration here. Uh, this is with the 100mm lens. So we can see here that uh, yeah, there is really no longitudinal chromatic aberration to be seen. Uh, that is when the bokeh in the near and far field out of focus areas kind of has a slight color tint to it. But as you can see here in this really difficult scene, the bokeh is super clear. And you know that is what the APO um, moniker on Zeiss's uh, sauna here actually means. When Zeiss say apo, that means apochromatic. Basically means you're not going to get color fringing in bokeh. Okay, next up, my favorite. We are going to be taking a look at some sharpness tests. So I've gone ahead and shot the Vivo X100 Pro up against my sharpness test chart, and we can see the results here. So first off, uh, we're going to be using the 15 mil lens, the ultra wide in its corrected format. Uh, you can see that in the center of the frame, if we go ahead and zoom that in, you know, there's a lot of resolution in the center, but as we move out towards the edges, you are starting to get a little bit of softness there. Now in the uncorrected version of this lens, you can see that in the edges, you know, there's just a lot of fringing starting to appear and a lot of resolution lost. It's not able to resolve this second or even third order uh, set of uh, line pairs. So that is really not a great result. 
Next up, we've got the 23mm, the main lens. This is looking a lot better. In the center of the frame, super, super sharp. If we zoom in there, uh, that is a really, really nice, uh, really nice resolution of the 23mm. If we zoom into the corners of the image as well, uh, it's actually doing a pretty good job also. You know, really no complaints here. A few really in the super far edges, a few little bits of uh, fringing in the very, very corners, but this is a really good result. And finally, our favorite lens, the 100mm f2.5, and what a performance. This is one of the sharpest results I've ever seen on my test chart, and that is including all of the different full frame lenses that I have. Uh, you can see right into the corners, this lens is trying to resolve every last little line there. Um, if we look into these really difficult diagonal lines as well, if we zoom into, you know, we're at 400% here and it is still resolving lines in this area. And what I did is I put these results into a program which spits out a value very similar to modern focus peaking algorithms. And the result is that the 100 mil here is well above all of the other lenses on the Vivo X100 Pro. It is the sharpest lens to use, and that is a really, really great result. Okay, guys, it's time for a showdown. We've got the iPhone 15 Pro Max here up against the Vivo X100 Pro. And look, I'm gonna tell you which one's which. On the left here, we're starting out with the 15 mil ultra wide lenses on both of these phones. Actually, the iPhone is a little bit wider than 15 mil, and we can zoom in here. This was set up on a tripod, so you know it's a pretty fair fight. Um, now it's worth noting that when you zoom in as much on the iPhones because it's a wider lens than 15 mil, that of course means that uh, things are smaller in the frame and will have less resolution. Um, I actually think the iPhones probably wins here very very slightly perhaps. Um, I like what the iPhone's done with the 15 mil, although there is a little bit more noise in the corners there. So either the iPhone wins or it's a draw for this first showdown. Next up though, we've got the 23 mil lens, the main lens on both of these smartphones. Let's zoom in, let's see how it's going. And yeah, this is where things start to go in favor of the Vivo in my opinion. So the iPhone, for whatever reason, has decided to make uh, this sourdough bread look like a brioche, which it very much was not. Uh, whereas the Vivo on the right, I mean, look at those colors. That looks exactly how it looked in person. So I think uh, resolution wise, the Vivo probably has the edge here as well. It just has slightly more resolution than the iPhone. So that's a win for the Vivo. Next up, 100 mil lens. And this is where it just starts to look a little bit embarrassing for Apple's latest and greatest. Um, this is of course the five times lens on the Pro Max and it doesn't hold a candle to the resolution of the Vivo. Um, this is exactly how it looked in camera. Uh, again, there was lots of light, sun was shining directly on the bread. Just look at that bread on the right. That looks like it was taken by a professional camera uh, without a doubt. Next up, let's try the macro mode. And well, do you need me to tell you that the iPhone's on the left and the Vivo X100 Pro is on the right? Uh, this is what happens when one of these two cameras has a Zeiss co-engineered floating element design periscope telephoto and the other is a standard smartphone. That's right, the iPhone does not hold a candle up to this. Look at the resolution in this tomato uh, in the macro mode here. And look at the natural bokeh that you're getting on the right as well. There's just no bokeh in the iPhones. I mean, it's not even close. What about joke modes? Well, this is the 25 times zoom on both of these cameras. And again, well, maybe maybe Apple's got some, you know, AI tricks up its sleeve when it does big zooms uh, into stuff. Unfortunately not. This was shot at the exact same space. I mean, you can count the pixels <laughs> that are visible in the iPhone's image, particularly in the tree area here where there's just no detail. Um, look, if we go up here to the actual trees in the distance as well, maybe a little bit of post-processing going on in, I would probably say both, but at the end of the day, the Vivos is just looking a lot better, even for this tree in the foreground here. It's just looking so, so much better. iPhone has well and truly lost to this. 
So look, we've seen the iPhone go up against the uh, Vivo. What about we give the Vivo a bit of a fairer fight? What about this? So let's zoom in here because I've actually forgotten which is which and uh, no, I remember now. Uh, so we've got two photos and one of these photos is actually taken with a professional full frame camera. Well, the Z6 is in my mind professional. Uh, and one of these photos is taken with the Vivo X100 Pro. Of course, the photo on the right with slightly more bokeh uh, is taken with the uh, professional camera with the Nikon Z6, but the photo on the left is the Vivo X100 Pro. Now, I shot this with a 100mm lens on my Nikon Z6, the exact same focal length uh, and actually the exact same optical design as the Vivo X100 Pro. And actually a kind of derivative of the X100 Pro's uh, coatings because the lens that I shot the photo on the right with the Kalina 5N uh, is a Soviet 100mm lens uh, that has Soviet optical coatings, which of course were derived from Carl's Ice coatings. And look, although of course the, the full frame... Uh, full frame shot has a little bit more resolution it look it definitely looks like a expensive full frame camera um, just in terms of the colors the vivo x100 pro here it's hard to tell that it is a smartphone and for that i think that's about as much of a win as you could hope for Alrighty, guys here we are vlogging on the vivo x100 pro we are in 4k 30 fps on the ultra wide angle camera now i have turned off uh, ultra stabilization there is a mode that i think offers a little bit more of digital stabilization but it does crop in a little bit more so uh, at this stage yeah we're just on the ultra wide 4k 30 and just yeah seeing how it goes this is also the inbuilt audio and i'm next to a busy road so it'll be interesting to see how well the inbuilt microphone handles all of these cars passing by me but uh also this is quite a challenging kind of scene for some cameras because i'm actually underneath some very very green foliage there's probably a lot of kind of green reflected light coming up to me be interested to see how it goes and then let's take a little dynamic range test see myself up against the sky see how it's doing there who knows let's find out uh, but yeah look it's a very fast and responsive camera app uh, i'm coming from an older android phone the uh, uh, the Xiaomi Mi 9T, which is a mid-range phone from around about 2019, I believe, 20, either 2019 or 2020, I can't quite remember, but it is a mid-range phone and coming up to this, which is obviously a lot closer to a flagship class phone, uh, the responsiveness and the refresh rate of the screen being higher is very, very noticeable. Uh, but yeah, so far I've only been using this phone for about, oh, maybe... 20 minutes, uh, 30 minutes, just taking a few photos with it. Uh, I love the pro mode in the phone. I love how the pro mode offers a histogram. It offers uh, different exposure metering modes. You can do center weighted or just all scene exposure weighting. Um, and that is very, very helpful as well. And I think one thing that's not talked about too much uh, with this phone is I actually really like how your main camera is bang in the center of the phone itself. So when you're pointing your phone at something, you don't actually have that slightly annoying kind of couple of centimeter offset when you're using your kind of primary, I think it's like a 35 mil equivalent or 23mm equivalent, something like that, camera. Hey okay guys, here we are trying out the 23mm primary lens on the Vivo X100 Pro for vlogging. We're at 4K 30fps and no ultra stabilization on. Um, apparently there is a little bit of video stayed in all modes, but also there's some, I think it's uh, some sort of optical or sensor stabilization in uh, in some of these lenses as well, if not all of them. Uh, I'll put a little note down in the video there just to confirm once uh, once I find out which. But yeah, here we are just walking along. As you can see, the 23mm, a little bit closer in, so you know I'm kind of having to hold my hand a little bit further out. I am vlogging using a small travel tripod with a uh, uh, mobile phone holder attachment to it. And yeah, I've got to say, looking at the Vivo while I'm vlogging, I've got the uh, uh, the Starshine kind of blue uh, ver variant of it, and it is a very nice phone to look at. So yeah, let's go ahead and see if the dynamic range of the 23mm is any better than the ultra wide. Let's see how it's doing there with my face in the sky. Let me know. 
in the sun, in the shade? How's it responding to that? Are those Zeiss T-Star coatings holding up? I hope they are. Zeiss, I mean, they have a really strong history of coatings. Of course, you know, the very first lens coating was made up by Zeiss uh, in Germany. It's actually made by, I believe, a Ukrainian engineer who was working for them at the time. Uh, of course, since then, lens coatings have prolifer pro proliferated, that's a tricky one, all over the world. And uh, yeah, now, the T-Star coating is famous enough for Zeiss to market it on the back of a flagship smartphone. Alrighty guys, here we are shooting on the Vivo X100 Pro in 4K 30fps in the video pro mode. So the video pro mode has a few different settings uh, than the standard video mode from what I can see. So you can see your uh, audio levels, you can also see uh, waveforms, you've got a histogram as well, which is in my opinion, slightly more useful in photo mode uh, because, of course, I'm using the uh, rear camera on the phone to record, which means I can't actually see the screen at all. Uh, but I do have it in autofocus. Now, the only change I've made is uh, compared to the standard video mode, I've changed this to average metering and I've set the EV to minus 0.7 EV just to see, you know, how this would cope at a slightly uh, you know, slightly darker EV to see if it, you know, retains still a little bit of dynamic range. Uh, outside of that, yeah, the video mode in the pro mode of the camera app is pretty similar to uh, the video mode outside of the pro mode. Uh, it seems all pretty intuitive. You can change your white balance, you can change uh, your focus, for instance, so you can actually technically speaking manually focus. Uh, manually focusing on phones is never quite as fun. It doesn't actually have any manual focus aids like focus peaking so I'm not really sure when you'd want to use that uh, unless of course maybe you're trying to just get a stationary shot and you want to manually focus it perfectly and just hit go. But even then, the autofocus on the X100 Pro is, you know, perfectly fast, as all modern phones are. So you probably don't need to do that either. And yeah, from my quick little uh, tests earlier on, checking out all of the three different lenses and how they cope with flaring, pointing them at the sun, basically. Um, I'm finding that the ultra wide, very, very good, barely any flares at all. The main 23mm, again, very, very good. Uh, and then you've got the 100mm f2.5, which unsurprisingly has a little bit more flair, but it's a very controlled flare. It's a very nice flare. Uh, dare I say, it's a cinematic flare. So no complaints there either. But uh, yeah, again, in the pro mode, you can shoot up to 8K 30fps. Uh, one tip is to go into the video settings and make sure that you've set your video uh, bitrate to the higher variant. I think it's 8 or 24. Uh, Mbps, so I've set mine to 24, which uh, obviously helps quite a lot uh, when it comes to the overall crispness and just general quality of your video because 24 megabits per second in H.265 is uh, equivalent to what about 100 in H.264 from memory, but either way, it should be plenty of bitrate. So guys, one question which I imagine is going to come up is how you can attach filters to the Vivo X100 Pro. And although there's no official filter support for it yet to my knowledge, uh, what I've got ahead and done is I've gone ahead and blue tapped a 62 to 67 millimeter uh, filter thread step up filter uh, and a couple of filters on here while I'm vlogging today. So uh, for this portion of the vlog I've got a 7 Artisans quarter strength uh, grey mist filter and a 1000 ND1000 10 stop ND filter on as well. So I'm still just using the 23mm main camera uh, 4K 30fps but what this is hopefully letting me do is walk around uh, still with a reasonable ISO. I think my ISO was hovering at around 700 or so which for a nice bright sunny Perth day is still pretty acceptable and you know you should see that the noise performance isn't bad whatsoever uh, but of course this lets me get slightly more natural motion and in the pro mode of the Vivo X100 Pro uh, in the pro video mode 
what I've gone ahead and done is just set the shutter speed to 1 60th of a second. Uh, of course, I'm shooting at 4K 30 FPS, so what this means is that my motion should now be nice and natural. So guys, here we are. I am testing out the Vivo X100 Pro's 100mm lens, uh, the 4.3x zoom in pro video mode. I've got my shutter speed set to 1 60th of a second. We are in 4K 30fps and uh, hopefully this is looking a little bit cinematic, a little bit nice with the uh, natural motion blur that's coming from the shutter because I've got that ND filter on. Now it is a little bit hard to uh, compose a scene when I can't actually see the camera, uh, what the camera's recording, but hopefully Hopefully this looks pretty good. So guys, when it comes to video on the Vivo X100 Pro, you've got a lot of options, you know. Uh, you can shoot time lapse like I did here with the ultra wide lens, and that ended up looking pretty good. Uh, then, of course, if you want some bokeh in your shots, the 100mm is just absolutely perfect for that. Uh, I will say that I feel as though I like the colors in photo mode a little bit more than video mode. I feel as though video mode's also just a touch over sharpened. Uh, but look, you can still definitely get some really nice video out of the X100 Pro. Now, I've only scratched the surface of this phone, but what's clear is that Vivo's Zeiss partnership isn't just marketing. They are taking optics seriously, uh, the result of which is a very impressive piece of engineering in the X100 Pro. But don't think all of this optical ingenuity appeared overnight. The brilliant optics we have in smartphones today, and particularly the cameras here, are in large part thanks to that Ukrainian optical engineer's invention of coded optics back in 1935, whilst he was working for Carl Zeiss Jenner. Now, I don't think I'll be putting all of my old lenses on eBay just yet. But one thing is for certain, the line between pro cameras and smartphones just got a bit more blurred.